CISA has free vulnerability scanning. CISA will identify their publicly facing um, internet assets, detect vulnerabilities, and then send them weekly reports with the vulnerabilities that they discover, as well as recommended mitigations. Hey everyone, it's Bob Crossan. I'm the editorial director for Waterworld and Wastewater Digest. I'm joined today by Lauren Wisniewski. She is Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency Water and Wastewater Sector Liaison, and we're going to be talking about cybersecurity in the water sector, particularly a toolkit that was recently released by CISA for Water and Wastewater Utilities. So thank you so much for being here, Lauren. Great. Thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So you have released this toolkit for water and wastewater systems. What what exactly is in this toolkit that these utilities can use to start to bolster their cybersecurity, uh, I guess their cybersecurity resilience in a way? Right. So at uh, CISA.gov slash water, um, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, um, co-branded a toolkit with the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, um, and our our goal was to compile the most relevant resources for water and wastewater systems, recognizing that it is a very large and diverse sector with varying levels of cybersecurity needs and maturity, um, so that we would highlight a couple of tools that we felt were underutilized and would help utilities make some progress very quickly, as well as point them into the direction of more advanced capabilities and resources um, for systems who had already gone through the basic cyber hygiene process, have basic cybersecurity practices, and we're looking to uh, further advance their cybersecurity posture. Yeah. So it's kind of like kind of like a roadmap or a guidelines of like, hey, here are some things that you should be considering if you're not already. And here's how you can kind of transition from beginner to intermediate to advanced and so on and so forth, essentially. Yes. Yeah, so to kind of have the, the the spectrum, but then also have them organized in a way that if you're interested in ransomware or phishing mm -hmm. or incident response, it's very clear where to go to get those resources because cybersecurity, if you haven't gone down that path, can be overwhelming and a lot. Um, and so really kind of creating, like you said, a roadmap um, to point people to the resources that would be most applicable to them based on their capabilities and their interests and needs. Mm -hmm. So what went into the creation of this toolkit? Was there anything that you learned through the process of creating it that surprised you or um, shaped, reshaped or made you rethink about how the water and wastewater sector is approaching this element of security? That's a great question. So the, the toolkit is going to be a living resource. It's on the website um, and we developed it with EPA. And for this initial version, it was taking existing resources, um, EPA, is the Sector Risk Management Agency, or SRMA, uh, for the water and wastewater sector. Uh, so they're sort of the, the lead with the water expertise and have a lot of water-specific specific resources. CISA is the nation's uh, cyber defense agency, as well as the National Coordinator for Critical Infrastructure. So we have a lot of deep um, cyber resources and tools. And so it was sort of packaging EPA's resources and CISA's to provide a comprehensive um, guide to the various federal resources that would be most applicable to water systems. Um, I think, you know, in, in conversations, you know, with EPA and cyber experts at CISA and um, water sector um, professionals, you know, a lot of it is just the basics for this sector, um, particularly mm -hmm. when you're looking at smaller to medium systems that they just need to focus on, you know, fundamental cyber hygiene, strong passwords, using multi-factor authentication, um, limiting their exposure to the public-facing um, internet, uh, and updating their software, and then training their employees to think before they click, um, because uh, phishing um, is um, an ever-present risk, and you know one, one click can really um, ruin uh, someone's day. <laughs> Yeah, Sorry, I don't that's know. For certain. Yeah, no, I you're you're totally correct, and I, even in my position, I, I I obviously get a lot of emails and press releases and things, and then amidst all of that, there's certainly phishing attempts that I've been uh, that I've certainly discovered and passed along to my IT team as well. So I think it is there is this ever vigilant 
element involved in this in this process and you you kind of have to learn to keep your eyes a little bit peeled for it um is there anything so kind of talking more in that realm is there something that you would consider kind of like absolutely vital like what every system should be doing this at the ground level you talked about like password strength and passwords being a little more vigilant with phishing are those kind of the things that you're considering to be the most vital things that they should be concerned with at this time and um, how would they graduate from those to something else right so i think an initial step is uh sisa has free vulnerability scanning um, and what that does is it uh, helps the water systems that enroll in this free service. Uh, CISA will identify their publicly facing um, internet assets, detect vulnerabilities, and then send them weekly reports with the vulnerabilities that they discover, as well as recommended mitigations. And historically, water and wastewater systems that have enrolled in this service have a significant reduction in vulnerabilities within the first few months of scanning. So not only are they signing up and getting these reports, but they're using that information. And the reports are something that, you know, a, a well-resourced utility might be able to in-house um, address those vulnerabilities, but it's in a report, you know, with the more significant um, or known exploited vulnerabilities, you know, in red, you know, so they could take that report, hand it off to a cyber expert that they bring in and say, you know, make the red um, vulnerabilities <laughs> go away. Um, and so that it's really designed um, to help systems. So I think that is a fantastic starting point um, for any system with internet facing assets um, that, you know, if you're out on the public, you know, domain, you need to make sure that, you know, you've addressed any vulnerabilities. Um, and if you don't need to be on the public domain, take those resources off the internet um, so you don't have those vulnerabilities out there. Yeah, what an outstanding resource. Uh, I'm glad to glad to learn about that because I don't think I knew about that until just now. So we will definitely make sure to include a link to that in our description so people can find that more easily and they can take part in that service. And um, I, Lauren, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you hopping on this call with me, chatting with us about about this toolkit and about some of the services that can actually very very be very useful to this audience of water and wastewater professionals. So I appreciate your time here. Great. Yeah. And for the vulnerability scanning, um, we worked last summer with some of the water associations um, to develop this fact sheet specifically for water utilities, um, promoting vulnerability scanning to put it in language that's accessible to someone who may not have the cyber expertise just for them to understand the service. It's very easy to get started. You email, email vulnerability at cisa.dhs.gov. Um, they'll send you some initial paperwork and then you you get on board. Um, mm -hmm. And then you'd ask about, you know, additional resources as you as uh, utilities advance in their cyber cybersecurity maturity. Uh, last month, we uh, released a cybersecurity incident response guide. That was a product mm -hmm. that was dual sealed um, with EPA as well as the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Um, we got a lot of sector input, um, both from, you know, industry um, in the, you know, IT cybersecurity and OT world as well as water utilities and water associations um, to identify, you know, how water systems would work with the federal government uh, before, during, and after a cyber incident response. Mm -hmm. um, and so to have those, you know, practices and plans in place, um, EPA has some resources. They have a cybersecurity um, incident action checklist uh, that you can find that through the cisa.gov slash water um, page as well. Um, to just have utilities think about it because um, cybersecurity, they're going they're going to be attacked all the time mm -hmm. or there's that potential. And so to have that plan in place so that when something happens, they know how to respond, they know who to contact, and they can share that information um, with federal agencies uh, so that we can um, make sure that we're getting that awareness across all the infrastructure mm -hmm. sectors and hopefully preventing other systems from experiencing similar attacks, as well as getting, you know, the resources to the impacted uh, utility um, to get them back online as soon as possible. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Lauren. I appreciate your time. We'll definitely have all of the, a bunch of links now <laughs> down in the description if you're watching this. So go check that out. Get some more information. You can learn all about it down there. We'll also have some links to some of the cybersecurity articles and content that we've produced over the past couple of years. But once more to Lauren, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay.